I really like gorillas. They make good music, they're really smart creatures, and they beat the shit out of each other. I think they're my favorite animal. One of my favorite video game characters is a stupid gorilla wearing a tie, and Tarzan's one of my favorite movies of all time because it has really well animated giant gorillas. I even like that new piece of shit Tarzan movie because it had the virtue of showing Tarzan's parents getting ground pounded by giant apes. And also the scene of Tarzan getting his ass beat by his older gorilla brother for, I don't know, like using his Xbox or something. Look, I wasn't really paying attention that much, but like I just know that there were giant apes on screen. But today I have found the ultimate gorilla movie. A South Korean live action film by the name of Mr. Go. A somewhat modern animal sports movie that came out in 2013. It's so weird seeing a movie of this type in this decade. It's such a 90s and 2000s type kind of film. Which there was an assortment of these back then. But the ones with the primates were always the most interesting. Hey! But yeah, some South Korean studio thought this was a good idea to make. The story begins introducing us to this Chinese circus where Mr. Go, or by his real name Ling Ling, but I'm gonna call him Mr. Go because one, it's cooler, and two, it doesn't make me feel racist, is a featured performer who is really good at hitting a baseball with a stick because his ringmaster of the circus really just liked baseball as a sport. So much so that he would take huge bets on baseball and losing, causing him to fall into massive amounts of debts to really bad people. And when some giant Chinese earthquake hit and fucked over the circus, this guy completely ate shit and died, leaving his 15 year old orphan granddaughter who was the only one who could speak to Mr. Go and his like 30 other orphan circus performing 8 year olds into massive amounts of debt to these gangster guys who just want their money. So these orphan kids are burdened with their grandfather's 6 million dollar debt and have like no hope of paying it off until this random sports agent guy is like, hey, gorilla hit ball good, can I sign him? And he's surprisingly able to actually do this. In the rule book, it does not state that the players all have to be human, but nobody's really convinced at the committee meeting until he uses a fucking Time magazine to try to make his point that they aren't all bad. In fact, a trained animal is safer than a human. By using this like image of like Mr. Go saving the Asian girl from a thing of rubble. It's like, okay bro, it's nice that the gorilla saved the young Asian girl in the earthquake, but you kind of jump in the gun, don't you think, pal? Oh look, this cat saved this kid. Don't you think that he'd make a great police chief? So then they go into an actual vote and it's a fucking landslide, it's a 9 to 1 vote on letting this gorilla play baseball and the mostly a lot of people voting yes are just doing it because they're drawing a crowd of money. So the sports agent guy's like, hey, Mr. Go, go pack your shit, you're gonna go to Korea and hit the ball. And they go to Korea and Mr. Go becomes fucking Korean Barry Bonds. <laughs> Mr. Go is so great at baseball that any sort of pitch you throw at him is no match for his sheer skill. A curveball is fucking easy. A fastball, child's play. Roll the baseball really slowly on the ground like a bowling ball. <laughs> You can't even walk this man in a traditional sense because he's so good. So while Mr. Go is over there being the most epic thing in Korea, they completely left like a bunch of 8 year olds with a bunch of Chinese gangsters on the prowl. Like they've literally been coming and camping outside this freaking circus for like a while. And the only defense these kids have is like this 7 year old guy who gets owned immediately. So these gangster guys completely take over the circus. And they see that the little girl left this shithead gorilla that nobody liked because he was an asshole. And he threw baseballs at people's heads at like a thousand miles per hour and these gangster guys are like hey cool let's release this guy so mr go continues being cool in korea until these guys send this isis s video to mr go's little girl master who stays behind one game to watch this video which was not a great idea because mr go has some sort of little freak out because he doesn't know how to hit the ball or do anything without his master whipping at him he like throws a bat into the far stands and hits some korean guy in the head and the movie makes it out like this guy is injured and he's fine but no Oh, he's fucking dead. Who could have foreseen a giant gorilla freaking out and injuring people in the crowd? Apparently not these guys. 
I know it's kind of impossible to throw to, hey, these people aren't really acting realistic when you have a literal gorilla playing an organized sport, but they don't really act how you would think they would about this happening. I thought they were going to shut this shit down and end Mr. Go being on the team, but no, it's punishment for endangering a good number of people and going on a little baby rampage was, hey, he can't go on away games. He's banned from away games. Why is he basically killed a man? So the girl's still watching this ISIS video where the gangster guy is acting all tough shit and then very comedically the gorilla beats the shit out of him. <laughs> and then he picks the camera back up and says like, hey kid, if you don't give me my money in like three months, I'm gonna sell these kids. Likely in some sex trade. Wow, that's kind of a dark consequence to this Gorilla Plays Baseball movie. At least it gives me some sort of stakes and reason to care about these kids, because they don't really do fuck all in the movie. But it's better than a regular Save the Community Center orphanage type lot line these kids movies have. Or at least I'm assuming Mr. Go is a kids movie, I, I have really no clue. It makes those films' problems seem like small potatoes in comparison. Help, you gotta save the orphanage or I'm gonna be separated from my brother. Well, I'm gonna be some creepy Chinese guy's favorite midnight snack if Mr. Go don't get that max contract. I'm sure you can live with Dave and Meredith, Timmy, you freaking whiner. So Mr. Go's master tells the agent, can I have my money now? And he's like, no, Mr. Go has to play the whole season and win the World Series of Korea. And she reluctantly agrees. But Mr. Go has been putting a lot of strain on his body apparently and has suffered a bad knee injury before the Korean World Series type thing and cannot perform. Meanwhile, the other teams are like, hey, I'm tired of getting my ass beat by Magilla Gorilla. Let's use an ape of our own. And they get the gangster dude to sell them the shithead gorilla who can throw really good. Seeing that the team really needs them, Mr. Go toughs out his knee injury and steps up the plate for the final inning to win this tie game. Mr. Go hits the home run and wins, and then the mad gorilla gets really mad and then starts a pretty entertaining fight scene where Mr. Go beats the crap out of him. Mr. Go wins the World Series and then the circus is back again. The scout guy goes through the typical you don't know what you have till it's gone feels for Mr. Go. Ah yeah, I bet you miss spending an exorbitant amount of money to harbor this giant beast living within your home. It's really a satisfying ending for almost everyone in the film. Even the gangster guy who was the main antagonist of the film doesn't really go to jail or anything, even though I assume threatening to sell a child in any country is illegal and can net you a decent amount of time in prison but no he's hanging out with his very own gorilla buddy in a Korean zoo by the end of the movie and teaching him how to play football which I'm disappointed that this movie did complete shit in Korea because we could have had a gorilla football movie football is already a dangerous sport to begin with with just regular humans imagine a gorilla being a linebacker or running back mr. go is just a really fun and dumb movie with pretty alright effects I was quite surprised at the amount of times the live-action characters physically interacted with this giant animal the CGI for the gorillas isn't perfect, but I wasn't really expecting that coming from a smaller budget Korean film. And when I say smaller budget, I mean relative to like American films. This isn't no Life of Pi levels of CGI of believable animals, but it wasn't bad either. It was quite impressive at times. And the one fight scene in the entire movie is actually pretty entertaining. You kind of actually feel the strength of these animals and just the way how they toss these humans and objects with pure ease. Like when the gorilla beams this baseball full speed in this guy's temple, how he did not suffer some sort of brain damage or skeletal fracture is nothing short of a miracle. 
and the punches these gorillas inflict on each other is just brutal. My real negatives with this film is just the length of it. I love funny kinda bad movies, but what I hate most about some of these terrible films is that they overstay their welcome. A movie like this should not be two hours long. It should be like its other animal sports contemporaries like Ed, MVP, and Air Bud, an hour to an hour and a half long. Shave off 30 minutes of this film and I think it would be a much more enjoyable watch. And to start of the movie, despite what I feel having a long runtime for this type of film, feels like it's really rushing itself. I kind of appreciate that and don't. I'm glad that they get to the good bits where the giant ape is knocking out of the park, but the start, particularly with the young girl's grandpa, just goes by so fast. Like, they comment on her grandpa's death, like, way further down the movie, and I'm just like, who the hell are they talking about? Oh yeah, that guy who had, like, a minute of screen time and I was supposed to feel sad for, but completely ate shit when the building fell on him. This almost takes the cake for, like, family deaths that nobody gives a shit about. If Superman's dad from Man of Steel didn't exist, this would be number one. Yeah, real nice Uncle Ben moment, you freaking imbecile. And the young girl and Mr. Ghost scout manager guy is also a character I did not really like that much. He's not a terrible character, he actually has some humorous moments, but the parts where he's annoyed that Mr. Go is tearing up his apartment grew to be very obnoxious. He gets really pissed off that Mr. Go is tearing up his $60,000 tree within his apartment. This is supposed to be a very comedic moment in the film and it doesn't work because I'm just angry at this guy. Like, what did you think was gonna happen? He in the next couple of scenes name drops the price of the prized possessions that Mr. Go accidentally breaks and is like, oh no, my $100,000 Blender. Oh no, he broke my $400 Pez dispenser. Why didn't you plan this out? I bet you have enough money to place him in a space or cage. Every damn thing that this gorilla breaks, you deserve because of your incompetence. Also, you live in an apartment. Who okayed this? Other than that, I think this is a fine flick. Pretty nice effects, and it does a great job at making baseball actually interesting. If you like gorillas with a heart of gold, watch Mr. Go. I give it 7 bananas out of 10. Yeah! <laughs>